Hello friends, this video on aldehyde ketones and carboxylic acid part 14 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now we'll talk about the nucleophilic addition reaction. This is what strong reaction. We'll talk about the mechanism. So if I have, there are two options. One is the nucleophile which is going to attack this carbonyl part is either strong or weak. So let's take one scenario where this guy is strong, the nucleophile is strong with a negative charge let's suppose. Correct. So if this nucleophile is strong, the negative charge, it's a strong nucleophile. So what will happen is, this we have seen this so many times back if you see the reaction mechanism we have discussed this, this carbon has Oxygen is more electronegative than carbon. Oxygen will get slightly negative charge, carbon slightly positive charge. Since carbon is slightly positive charge, this nucleophile with a negative charge will attack this carbon. And this bond will break in this fashion. So with this, if you see oxygen gets negative charge and the nucleophile is attached here. Right? And then a hydrogen H plus will come and this O minus will attack the H plus. This is how it will happen, given the nucleophile is strong. The next case, the nucleophile is B. So in this case, what will happen is, first my H plus will come, right? So now this, what will happen is this H plus, this guy will attack this H plus. And this bond will again break in this fashion. So what happens is, this becomes OH and carbon gets a positive charge. This is my carbon, it gets a positive charge. And then my nucleophile, my weak nucleophile actually, will easily come and sit here. So there are two possibilities. One is the nucleophile is strong, the nucleophile does the attack first. But if nucleophile is weak, then some H plus comes and then it attacks this O minus, creates carbocation, and then nucleophile can easily come and attack that carbocation. Correct? So this nucleophilic addition reaction can happen from by two ways. One is the nucleophile is strong, the other is the weak, the nucleophile is weak. Life is a race and as I told aldehyde and ketones they have similar reactivity, right? So there has to be a case where or we have to tell whether aldehyde is more reactive or ketone is more reactive. Which one is more powerful? Whether uh, aldehyde comes first or the ketone comes first, right? So there has to be a decision done. So let's understand which one is more reactive. Is it aldehydes or is it ketone? So if we observe that aldehydes are more reactive. So this guy is aldehyde is more reactive and this guy is ketone. This is observed when aldehyde comes first. They are more reactive than ketones in nucleophilic addition reaction. As far as the nucleophilic addition reaction is concerned, aldehydes are more reactive. And there are two reasons. The first is steric interest and the second is the plus I effect. I will tell you both. So this is my aldehyde. And this is my ketone. So if you see, this is my carbon, which has to be attacked. The first reason I told you steric is because if you see here in this case, for a nucleophile to attack, I have a nucleophile here. So there is no less space to attack because of steric hindrance, right? But nucleophile can attack this guy because there's more space to attack. But since there's a hydrogen here, right? Hydrogen is small and it provides comfortable space for nucleophile to attack. So going by that parameter, if you see aldehyde is more reactive because aldehyde can be attacked easily because of the steric hindrance. The next is the plus I effect. As I told, oxygen is more electronegative than carbon and oxygen develops partial negative charge and carbon develops partial positive charge, partial negative charge, partial positive charge. 
Now, this partial positive charge, if you see, and these are my alkyl group, they have plus I effect. This is neutralized by these alkyl group. They are, these provides electron to this carbon. So this positive charge is not that great, right? But this positive charge is great because this has two alkyl group attached to it to minimize the impact, but this has only one alkyl group. Hydrogen doesn't provide electrons. So in that case, it has more positive charge on this carbon. Correct? This, so this is my electro, sorry, nucleophilic carbon. This is my nucleophilic center, actually, because it has more positive charge and higher is the positive charge in this carbon, the greater is the chance for nucleophile to attack. Correct? This carbon has less positive charge. Why? Because whatever positive charge it had, it got nullified or it is diminished a little bit by the plus I effect of these two alkyl group. So there are two reasons why aldehydes are more reactive. One is aldehyde since it has one part as hydrogen, it is R C O H A and here it is R C O R dash. Both are bulky, right? So here you have H, here you have R dash. So if you see this has more space. This has less space. So due to steady hindrance, nucleophile can easily approach aldehydes, but they can't approach ketone. That is one thing. And because of the plus I effect, since they are two R group attached, they minimize the plus charge on carbon. Here only one R group attached. They do minimize, but to a lesser extent. So this carbon in aldehyde is more positive. It has more positive charge. It has less positive charge. Since it has more positive charge, nucleophile can easily attack. Hope you understand why aldehyde is more reactive than ketones for a nucleophilic addition reaction. Please note, I'm talking only about this nucleophilic addition reaction. This race is all about nucleophilic addition reaction only. Let's take one numerical here. Let's uh, find out which one is more reactive towards again nucleophilic addition reaction, benzaldehydes or propanol. Both are aldehyde now. So they told there are two parameters. One is the steric hindrance, which we have learned till now, and the plus I effect. So let's see steric hindrance. This is a big benzene ring, so steric hindrance is more, right? And this is steric hindrance is less. Steric hindrance is more here. So going by steric hindrance, going by steric hindrance, which one is more reactive? Which one is less reactive? So I think benzaldehyde is less reactive, right? By steric hindrance because it has more steric hindrance. Difficult for nucleophile to attack because of the big uh, size of benzene here. But here it can attack. So because of steric hindrance, benzaldehyde. is less reactive. Correct. Let's the next parameter. The next parameter we have is the plus I effect. So this is my carbon and this is my carbon I'm talking about. So I have put this here in green. Now this benzene ring is electron withdrawing and this has slightly positive charge. We have seen slightly negative, slightly so benzene ring has electron withdrawing capability and this alkyl group has electron releasing capability. So with I effect we can see that since a benzene ring sucks electron or withdraws electron this carbon is all the more positive. So with this propanol is less reactive. Less reactive. Correct? Because if you compare by the I effect, right, the propanol actually will be less reactive because the alkyl group is giving electron and it's becoming less positive, and this benzene ring is taking electrons from this carbon and becoming all the more positive. This carbon is more positive than this carbon. Right? Now we are confused. The first thing says benzaldehyde is less reactive, second says propanol is less reactive. So here we have to see the third 
parameter also this resonance because the moment we talk about benzene ring we talk about resonance so let's see what happens if a nucleophile attacks this benzene if a nucleophile attacks this benzene i have a benzene benzaldehyde actually and let's suppose a nucleophile attack this becomes minus charge and there's a nucleophile here so what happens if a nucleophile attacks this and then you get this compound actually O minus H N nucleophile this is what you get correct now check if is this stabilized is this stable due to resonance can we check that so we will not be able to draw resonating structure here structure of product expected right because if you see if you want to form a bond you have to break something so resonating structure is not possible for the product let's see for the reactant if the resulting structure is possible or not. So the reactant is this guy. C O O H. This is my reactant. Correct. So let's see if the resulting structure is possible. This becomes negative, this becomes positive, right? And let's break this bond. With this, what you get is let me see. C O minus H double bond here and here and here you get a positive charge here. Let's draw more structure here. This bond breaks. Correct. Now we'll break this bond. This is exactly the same I'll draw. This is a negative charge all over the place. Sorry, I have missed that. Yeah. This bond breaks, so you get here. And you get a positive charge here. And again, it goes back. So if you see, this is my reactant. Now I see the reactant has more resonating structure, the product is not having the resonating structure. So if I talk from reactant, to product for this case my reactant is stable and the product is not stable correct because product we don't have much many resonating structure but for reactant we have so many resonating structure that means it is stable that means it is less reactive so with this we confirm that benzaldehyde is less reactive Hope you understood what I'm trying to say. See, we were confused. Steric hindrance says benzaldehyde is more reactive. Plus I effects say benzaldehyde is more reactive. Correct. Now then we saw the resonance. We saw that for the product, we are not able to draw any resonating structure. We assumed that the reaction happened in nucleophile attack. But for reactant, we were able to draw resonating structure. We concluded that the reactant is more stable than product. So if reactant is more stable than product, that means there's a high chance that the reaction won't happen. Right, the reaction is more stable, so that means the reactant is less stable, uh, less reactive, and that's what the reactant here is my benzaldehyde. Because we are talking about the resonance only for benzaldehyde, we are talking about the resonance, we are not talking about the resonance for propanol. So, with this, we conclude that benzaldehyde is less reactive. Thank you. Visit our website examfear.com to watch more and more quality educational videos. You can also attempt free online tests that are there in our website. You can also get access to tons of free study materials and you can also find free tutors and mentors in this website. Thanks a lot for watching.